Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss the first hour tutorial for chapter 6, Benzene and its derivatives. For non-face-to-face questions, they want you to write the IUPAC name for the following compound. So when naming a benzene compound, we need to first indicate whether this benzene is going to be the parent or substituent. For the first structure given on the top and also on the left-hand side, we have benzene as a parent. How do we know this? By looking at the benzene with the most number of carbon and directly attached to it, we have a functional group of carbonyl. And now we are going to name this structure of the parent as the acetophenone because we have the common name for this compound. So we're going to write it as acetophenone. Since we have a functional group attached to this benzene, means the numbering will start from this carbon holding the functional group. And then we need to look at the lowest number combinations as possible when we have more than one substituents. If we rotate clockwise, we're going to get combinations of 1, 2 and 3, means 1 and 3. If we happen to rotate anti-clockwise, then we're going to get combinations of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 means the meta will be at carbon number 5. So between 1 and 3 and 1 and 5, we're going to go for this 1 and 3. So now, we need to name this substituent as 3 methyl acetophenone. So this is going to be the name of the first compound. Next, for the second compound, on the right, we have benzene as a parent chain so this our parent chain now gonna be this one benzene with carboxyl group directly attached to it so we could say the parent named as benzoic acid and then look for the substituent attached to it we have br so we are going to rotate clockwise so that we can have a combinations of one and two so the name of this compound is going to be 2-bromobenzoic acid. For the third compound, we're going to have toluene as our parent chain. So, toluene is the common name for methyl benzene. So, this is our methyl attached to the benzene. So, we write the parent as toluene. Means the number of carbon will start from this methyl. So now, we need to prioritize the numbering, whether they are going to have lower combinations or higher combinations of number. If we happen to rotate clockwise, we're going to get the combinations of 1, 2, 4, and also 6. If let's say we want to rotate anti-clockwise, we're going to have exactly the same combinations of number. So, we'll stick to these clockwise rotations, then look at our substituents. We have exactly the same group attached to it, which is nitro. So we have nitro group attached to it, but they are all three substituents together. Since they are the same, we can combine the number by separating it using comma. And then don't forget the prefix used. Since we have three same substituents, then we can put tri at the front, indicating there are three nitro groups. So the name going to be tri nitro toluene. 246 trinitrotoluene. And last but not least, the fourth compound, we have two chain of carbon, one with important functional group attached to it. We could see carboxyl group attached to it. Whenever we have important functional group attached to it, even though the number of carbon is less than the benzene, then they're gonna be the parent chain. So this straight chain gonna be the parent chain means for this case our benzene gonna be the substituents. So let's proceed with this parent chain. We have one, two, three, and four carbon means they are butanoic acid. So we'll write the parent as butanoic acid. And then the benzene as substituents, there are only two names of benzene as substituents. If you have parent chain, then this bond showing the substituents. If you have benzene directly attached to your parent chain, means the name going to be phenyl. The other case, if you have benzene 
attached to the parent chain with additional CH2 means the name gonna be benzyl. So then for our case, the name gonna be phenyl. Don't forget the numbering on the parent chain. So we have benzene at carbon number 2. So the name gonna be 2-phenyl butanoic acid. For question 2, you are asked to draw the structural formula of compounds A to D in the following reactions. So we could see that all these reactions starts from the benzene itself. So these reactions going to involve electrophilic aromatic substitutions. What is meant by these electrophilic aromatic substitutions? We aim to substitute one of the H on the benzene itself with chlorine, nitro group, acyl group and also alkyl group. As for A, we have reactions of benzene with chlorine with the presence of FeCl3. So the name of these reactions is called as halogenations. So we want to substitute H with the Cl or any other halogen given. So we're going to have benzene directly attached to it is the Cl, only one Cl. Next, we have the reactions of benzene with nitric acid with the presence of H2SO4 under the conditions of 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Then we're going to involve the reactions called nitrations where we want to substitute the H with nitro group NO2. So we're going to get product B of benzene directly attached to this benzene is the NO2. So the nitro benzene. Next for C, we are going to react this benzene with acid chloride with the presence of AlCl3. The name of this reaction is friedel crofts acylations because we want to add the acyl group into our benzene substitute. So our product is going to be benzene. And then directly attached to it, we have C double bond O because the electrophilic site is at the carbon that bearing the O. So this is going to be our C double bond O. Then we have to CH2, CH3. And lastly, for compound D, we are going to react benzene with haloalkane with the presence of AlCl3. So we are going to substitute our H with the alkyl group attached to the Cl. So once the C and Cl be broken, we're going to get the carbocation ion and then the benzene as nucleophile will attack the carbon in the middle because they are the most stable carbocation ion. Then lastly, they're going to get product of alkyl benzene. So this bonding formed from these reactions going to take place at carbon number 2 means look at the carbon number 2, we have carbon number 1 and carbon number 3 attached to them. So we're going to have like this product. So the name going to be isopropyl benzene. We'll proceed with face-to-face -face questions for this hour. We are given compound S is formed when benzene react with bromine in the presence of FeBr3. Write the reactions equations for the formations of compound S. So you are already given the benzene as the starting material. React with the bromine Br2 in the presence of FeBr3 as the conditions. So you're going to write the reactions equations like this. We have benzene to start with. And then we're going to react them with Br2. On your arrow, we have our conditions Fe. Br3 as the catalyst to increase the polarity of the halogen to be readily accessible by the nucleophile. And lastly, our product going to be bromobenzene with the side product of HBr. What is the type of this reaction? So the type of this reaction is going to be electrophilic. aromatic substitution. 
not the halogenations. For question C, you are asked to outline the mechanism for these reactions. We have learned that mechanism for these electrophilic aromatic substitutions is going to involve only three steps. The first step is going to be the formation of electrophile. So our electrophile varies from one reaction to another. So we're going to have these two form, whether you are going to form positive charge or you're going to have complex ion. Complex ion will be formed if you are going to form unstable intermediate species. Then we're going to proceed with the formations of arenium ion. So arenium ion means that you're going to form your benzene with positive charge. And lastly, we're going to lose the H+. So by having H plus lose from your benzene, then you're going to retain the multiple bond in your benzene. Alright, let's start doing this mechanism for these reactions. So we're going to have the step 1. So our step 1 is going to involve the reactions between the Br, Br with the FeBr3. So the functions of this FeBr3 is to increase the polarity of the halogen to be readily accessible by the nucleophile in the next steps, the second steps. So initially we have neutral compound to start with, but by making them as positive or negative charge, it will make it more obvious for you to attack them since they are weak enough to be attacked. So we should show all the lone pair on the Br because we're going to use this lone pair to form a bond with the FeBr3. So one of the lone pair on this Br going to donate one of their electrons to the FeBr3 to finally form Br. Br now we have donated one of um, our lone pair so they will become a bond in here together with FeBr3. Check the formal charge on the Br. So initially we have 7 valence electrons minus 6 electrons around this Br means we're going to have a positive charge on this Br. While Fe initially they are already stable. Once they got more electrons means they're going to form negative charge. So during the first steps, you need to indicate are you going to immediately form positive and negative charge separately or as complex ion. As for this case, we aim to take only the Br. But then, can this Br be separated from this Br on the middle? So, we are going to keep it as this complex ions because if we form Br+, plus, because it is very hard to form Br+. Plus. So, we are going to stop until here for the first step in these halogenations. We are going to form our electrophile as complex ion. Then we'll proceed to step 2. In step 2, we are going to form benzene with positive charge. So how are we going to form this benzene with positive charge? We're going to react the benzene with the complex ion we have formed in the first step. So we have Br with positive charge in here attached to the FeBr3 that has now become the negative. Now the benzene as a nucleophile will break one of the bond to take the Br in and then break the bond between this Br and Br. Now we are going to add this Br to the benzene. Means we have this benzene. The bond, the other multiple bond, we need to keep it as it is. But now one of the bond has been broken. So we're going to have Br in here. We know that in this carbon, we have bromine and also hydrogen. What about the other carbon? Initially, we have only one H at each carbon here. Means we are left only with one hydrogen in here. Means that we are going to form positive charge at this carbon. So we have positive charge. We don't need to show this H. So we'll write this again. So we'll put our positive charge in here. 
It doesn't matter whether they are inside or outside as long as they are closer to the carbon that we are interested in. Since we have already learned about the aromaticity, they are completely conjugated. It means that it's not just this carbon that involves in the substitutions. You can also shift it to another carbon with multiple bond. So during this step, we are going to show some resonance between the carbocation and also the double bond. So now we are going to move this double bond on the left hand side here to give it to this bonding by shifting place of this double carbon carbon double bond means the positive charge will also transfer it to the other carbon so we are going to use this arrow to show the resonance so we're going to have our benzene keep everything else the same now only your double bond has changed its place so you will form double bond in here and the other one in here what happened to this carbon we're gonna have our positive charge in here next can we swap the other multiple bond on the right hand side to the left yes we can do this by moving this double bond in here to this carbon we're gonna get another resonance of this benzene so we're gonna have benzene we have H and Br in here we have double bond here and double bond here means that our positive charge will be here so when you are drawing the resonance we need to put this square bracket to indicate there are resonance to one another so during the second step you need to show the resonance formed of this arenium ion as for the final step we are going to proceed with the loss of H plus where we are going to further react our arenium ion with the nucleophile being separated during the first steps so we'll start with our one of our resonance structures where we have HBr and don't forget the multiple bond in here and together with our positive charge then we're going to react them with our FeBr3 that has now become the FeBr4 negative Well, we're going to first break this bond to give all the electrons to the Br and then making this Br to become a negative charge. By having this negative charge, they will become the nucleophile and then take this H and lastly to retain the multiple bond inside the benzene. And lastly, our final product is going to be the bromobenzene together with the side product of HBr. That's all for week 10 hour 1. Thank you for listening.